We all know our ginger science friend isn't a fan of battling Pokemon. However, she and Yampe once took part of the gym challenge one time ago. Likewise to Professor Oak and Professor Kukui who became champions. So today we're going to find out if Sonya could beat Leon and become champion as well as Professor in Sword and Shield. There are some easter eggs and some clues into what team she would have from her character and personality to the anime and Pokemon Masters and we'll be finding them out along the way. So with that said, here are the rules for the challenge. First of all, no held items in battle whatsoever. No overleveling past the gym leader's ace Pokemon, and only my ace Pokemon can Dynamax, which we'll talk about along the way. I will also be playing in set mode and have the matching team size to the other gym members, and only one Pokemon per route or area as well. As always, I'm writing the script as I go along with the video, and at this point, I haven't even started the challenge yet. So comment down below whether you think I'll be able to beat it or not. And if you guys enjoy these videos, then obviously hit the subscribe button, slap the notification bell. And with that said, let's get gaming. So for this challenge, I chose Sobble to be my starter for two reasons. One, Sonya should have a Galarian starter if Leon has one as well. And my second reason would be Leon having Rillaboom, like in the anime. I called him Sobs. However, this is a Pokemon I will probably not use later on, but we'll see what happens. For now, I'm off to find my Corgi sidekick, Emil Yampe, and being an electric type, I name him Bolt, before arriving at my grandmother's house. Here we can find a few clues into what her team could look like. First, the Leaf logo on their board, suggesting her love for grass types, but also the research pictures of Butterfree, as well as Zubat, and also the bobbleheads of Hatterene's lineup, so already that's 5 Pokemon added to Sonya's decks. I should say there is no limit on how many we catch, especially with her being a professor. The goal is to make a team of 6 while still being able to beat the unbeatable champ. And that's exactly my plan. Oh no Hop, why? I only have my poor Pop! A load of nuzzles and tail whips later and we scrape a win against our rival with 3 HP remaining. This was actually very challenging and I enjoyed the fight. A couple of stars fell from the sky and this calls for myself and grandmother to build a Dynamax band. After that, we make haste back towards Route 1 again to catch another Pokemon, Canopy. After all, it's something Sonya wanted when she was younger. We called him I don't really need to catch anything around the wild area at this time. So after grinding out some experience candy and Dynamax candy, Peter Pie evolved to Metapod and headed straight to Motorstoke to check in. I chose uniform number 26, as that's her age. And instead of going to Route 3, I decided to take on a different approach and head to the Crown Tundra and Isle of Armor for a couple more team members. We arrive in this freezing cold environment in where I can barely feel my feet, but after helping this weirdo escape and getting made into a pancake by high horsepower, we're on course to Frostpoint Field where we jump straight in a max raid battle for our bats. Then head towards the coastal Isles of Armor to recover after Humonia. From here we beat a Padawan and its master. Avery loses it. What the heck? The slowpokes are quicker than Sonic. So off on a wild goose chase we go and we manage to bump into them. But it mows me down, putting me in the hospital. Once my insurance claim went through, we return the uniform in trade for our Kanto starter. Now hear me out. We know the grass symbol in the bedroom and the fact Sonya dropped out of the gym challenge because of her friend and rival Leon. And Leon won, who was taught by Sonya and also has a Kanto starter. So it makes sense that Sonya had a Kanto starter too, and the one weaker to his Charizard. Yep, I'm talking about our little green frog that I called Sprout. This will be Sonya's ace, so we can Gigantamax like Charizard. Oh no. That could change the entire run. For now, we head over to Route 3 to start farming the XP and levels where PewDiePie evolved to Butterfree. And Sprout evolved into Ivysaur from taking out our rival, being a school bully, and getting workers fired in the Galar Mines. Along the way, we start talking to a boy in pink. Hey, you look cute. Can I have your number? I don't like boys. Works for me. I let our little Corgi do most of the job with Bite on Solosis and Gothita before finally going down to Hatina. Sprout comes out for his Christmas friend to find out it doesn't like Sprouts. 
so down it goes with two Razor Leafs. Before arriving at her field, I find and catch an Eevee. For three reasons. One, I like Eevee. But the other two reasons are the fact that all evolutions are different and require different stones and tasks. I think it would be a great Pokemon scientifically for a Pokemon professor, but it would also counteract half of Leon's team. I call the Eevee Cookie before getting ran over by Milo's Wooloo, which I claimed on insurance after putting me in the hospital again. After recovering, it's time to take on the gym. But remember, Milo has only two Pokemon, so I must use two Pokemon. My choices being PewDiePie and Buffy. They were both four times resistant to grass types, so it should give me a good buff, especially with the fact that I can't Dynamax without Sprout. Two gusts blow the Gossiflor away, quickly sending his Elagos for the Dynamax. It uses Max Overgrowth, which we resist, and we chip away with Gus until its Dynamax turns are over. But a Max Strike knocks my Butterfly back to the ground. Buffy comes out, and we start hitting with Poison Fang, badly poisoning. Two rounds get Buffy in the red, but three Poison Fangs and Poison Damage take Elder Glass out, winning us our Grass Badge. On the way to the next gym, Holbury, I start grinding the rest of my team out. Sobs evolve into the Emo Lizard. We get stopped by more chaps, but it wasn't a problem for my little corgi and nuzzling away, paralyzing and taking out Zigzagoon, but Fievel was just too much, beating up Bolt. I send out Sobs to finish the job with Water Pulse. Lots of Sableye and PewDiePie simply blows them away with two gusts. What? Why are you using my Rotom for the bike? It won't matter anyways because it spawns post-game and in thunderstorms. So I can't really get it. <laughs> Anyways, a quick easy battle with Hop later and we're on our way to Holbury. Our Buffy evolved to Golbat too. Before taking on our friend Nessa, we fly back to Motorstoke for a makeover. Sonia's hairstyle and colour is very unique, so even I can't replicate it. This looks close enough? You look younger all of a sudden. Yeah, it's called science, mate. We sweep through the maze with ease and gain the right to challenge our mermaid friend. This round, we can Dynamax as I brought Sprout with us. Remember, Sprout is my battle ace, whereas Bolt is my loyal friend, who uses Nuzzle and paralyzes Goldeen, taking it out with two sparks. Aracuda gets the same treatment with Nuzzle, though it still outspeeds. Two Aqua Jets get us in the red, but two sparks was enough to take it out, leaving her Dynamax Dreadnought, and wasting one of the turns sweeping Bolt. Buffy comes out and we go for the Absorb, even though it's 20 special, it's four times weaker. He goes for Max Geyser, activating Swift Swim, and takes Buffy out. However, we can safely get Sprout out on the field and Dynamax. Two Max Overgrowths securing our water badge. We met up with the chairman and Miss Oleana alongside with the older version of me. I think I've done well to cosplay the best I can do with limited options. Bead is still rejecting to date us in the Galar Mines, so another battle it is although it takes Bolt out instantly with a critical hit Psyshock. Buffy comes out with a Revenge Astonish, bringing Solosis down. A critical hit Poison Fang brings its Gothita in the red, but it wasn't enough and we fall. PewDiePie finishes it off with Gus. We bring a decent amount of health with Gus and a third one was just too shy of taking it out, meaning Hatena finishes off Butterfly. Go, Cookie! Quick attack! <laughs> Ponytail was all that was left, and two swifts and one more quick attack was enough for Cookie to beat Bead. That's what you get for rejecting my love. Team Yell was proving some problems verbally with Kabu and Karkol, but it's no problem for myself and Hop. Or maybe just myself. Kabu was all fired up to battle us, but before we do, we have one more Pokemon we need to catch, and that's Hatena. Whereas I personally don't think it fits, remember the bobble heads on Hatterini's evolution line? I think Sonia just simply likes them. Regardless, we catch the wizard and call it Luna. Also, Bolt evolved to Boltound, and this is exactly why I didn't want to make him my ace, as it evolves from a corgi to an English foxhound. Maybe Sonia had two dogs. Regardless, we press on to challenge Marnie. Peter Pie goes against her Krogunk with one gust bringing it to the red and another one blows it away. Her rat, Morpeko, comes out, and a bite finishes PewDiePie. I send out Sprout to take, take it down with a critical hit Seed Bomb, and Scrafty with another one. Another one. It wasn't enough, and headbutted us six feet under. 
Cookie, quick attack. I'm fast as boy. A nice easy fight later, and we're ready to take on Kabu the following morning. My team consists of Sobs, Buffy, and Bolt. He starts with Nine Tails and gives us the Will O Wisp burn. Other than the burn damage, this won't affect our special attack, meaning two water pulses take out. Arcanine comes out, and again, the Intimidating isn't bothering our Lizard, but does hit with two bites and a flinch. The burn damage is helping for the Torrent ability, but Gigantamax Center Scorch comes to play, and a Max Flutterbite finally finishes us off after a chunk of damage. I send out Bolt to chip away and paralyze the Centipede, though it takes us out on the last turn of Dynamax. I can safely turn to Buffy and tucks into the book with two Poison Fangs. With that said, we're already three badges in, and we haven't ran into too much trouble. I swear, if you don't take that back, mate, we're over. Bye, mommy. Now let me take care of the trash. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, and you're not really fine. After a horrible breakup, I decide to catch our next member, Bon Sweet. But Sonya didn't just have a Serena in Pokemon Journeys, she had a shiny Serena. But surely I wouldn't be stupid to shiny hunt for a Bon Sweet. Right? Right? Now, ah, fuck it, start the counter. Much, much later. It's the next morning, and my partner took over while I was working on another video. We got our shiny peach. We're a docile mate, yeah. I called it Peachy and explored Hammerlock, learning more about the history of Galar before dealing with Team Yell at Route 6. Oh my god, it's so cool! I couldn't use it against Stunky, so the rest of my team finish it off with ease and we're off to hunt for our next Pokemon, Yamask. And Buffy likes me so much, it evolved to Crowbar. And Peachy also evolved to Steenie. My thoughts behind this next one is Leon's Asia Slash represents Galar. I wanted something too. Stonejourner would have been the better choice as it represents ruins and the history like you see in Turfield. But as it's in sword only, I settled with Galeria and Yamask with a unique evolution requirement and based upon ancient Galar ruins. Besides, it looks cooler. I called it Kekit as that's a female goddess of darkness in ancient Egyptian history. We need to grind some more level ups and moves before we move on. I evolve Keke into Renegus for the stat buff and Sprout to Venusaur. Now we're ready. We venture onto Stolen's side to help Hop with his depression after his loss with my ex. He starts with Cramoron and the spark from Bolt takes it out. He sent in Silicobra and I switch to Sprout, taking the brutal swing. Two seed bonds take it down as Hop heals. Rabu is out next and we switch to Buffy. Cross poison, dealing big damage as well as poison, bringing Ninja Rabbit down to its knees. His last Pokemon is Toxel and I switch again to Kekit. One Shadow Claw finishing Hop. Sorry mate. Alistair might have the upper hand, with my chosen team being physical attackers, abilities including weak armor and wandering spirit. But after settling Buffy, Bolt, Kakette, and Sprout, we bite the ghost, but it disables it. So our fly later takes it to the graves. We do big damage with fly on Cursula, but ancient power dents. One more bite finishes it off. Dead Pikachu is up, and here I should have used my other moves, but I go for a fly giving him the opportunity to set two home claws. We take the disguise out and do damage, but it finishes us off. I send out Bolt and hit with Spark, but go into the red and another slash hits hard. One more Spark finishes it off. Gengar is quick and knowing the paralysis won't help Kakett, I go for Crunch, hoping for the defense drop. It doesn't, but we live on seven and go for Spark to chip. Max Ooze, however, does finish us off and I send my ghost out. We tank a Max Darkness and a payback finishes Gengar, securing our fourth badge. Bede, what on earth are you doing? Why do you care? I'm a scientist, mate. Uh -huh, this my sh <gasps> the boys in black and white arrest my horrible ex, and after learning more about the ruins, this exact cutscene of it crumbling showcases why I picked your mask. We head to Balon Lee to take on the fairy wizard, while I go through the auditions with Cookie, 
Bolt, Buffy and Sprout. I have a Discord server where you can all join in the fun with the community, in addition to trade and battle with other trainers like yourself. The link is down below in the description. With that said, let's take on Opal. She starts with wheezing and I get this question right for one reason, to baton pass to Bolt. We take it out with a few swifts before using baton pass to pass down the speed buff with Bolt. However, intimidation didn't help here. It bulks up and we nuzzle for paralysis. Before chipping away, we get into the red, but we finally raise our attack stats by lying to her about her age. Taking out Marwile. Toja kisses up and a spark dents and also paralyzes. We tank another draining kiss with 2 HP and a second spark takes it down. She sends out Al Creamy and I go for spark. Though it didn't end and a G Max finale brings us down. I bring out Buffy with Poison Fang and chip away as it continues to heal with the G-Max Finale. Once the Dynamax is over, one more Poison Fang and it's over for the Fairy Gym. Come to laugh at me now I'm disqualified. Well, actually, yes, you are my ex. I am not your pink. Hub wanted another match, sending out Trevenant first. I bring out my bat and the single fly takes it down. His dog comes out and I hit hard with a cross poison and a roar sends out my dog. With it, I show my alpha dominance with a crunch and Hop sends out Cinderace. I bruise with a thunder fang but his bunny scores a free kick with pirate ball. The next round is the exact same where I bring him into the red and he takes me out with another goal. Cookie quick attack. No hat trick for you. Snorlax is out and I chip away with Bite, though this was probably a bad idea while he stocked Pals up. It takes down Cookie and Sprout, but finally Buffy comes back out and finishes with a critical hit cross poison. And another critical hit cross poison for this Ant Eater as well. We set forth for Sir Chester, where we found a river island and bought a new bag. Hop lost to Melanie, but surely it wouldn't be too challenging for Buffy, Cookie, Coquette and Bolt. Right? Right? Uh, well, no. G-Max Resonance and Darmanitan are just too strong. Luckily, I had an idea. Leon has a pseudo-legendary, Dragapult. And I believe Sonya should too, but not a dragon. Sonya's team is about grass types, cute Pokemon, and scientific slash historical. But she also hangs out with a Beldum in the Ground Tundra DLC. And I managed to find one in the Snowslide Slope Den. I call it Steve. Steve, Steve! And I also found an Ice Stone evolving my cookie to Glaceon. With a change to my team and getting Steve to level with the team, it evolved to Meltang, and we were already back at Melanie's face. Crobat faces Frostmoth again, taking it out with a super effective fly. Darmanitan is up next, and I go for a cross poison, taking the poison stat. It takes us out with Icicle Crash, but poison damage triggers Zen Mode. Panic him, I send out Coquette, and we survive a super effective Ice Cold Crash, but Payback takes it out. SQ is next and finishes Coquette's Misery. I send out Bolt for Nuzzle. This activates Ice Face, but halves the speed, so we're still quicker. It couldn't move due to Paralysis, and a Fire Fang and Crunch take it out. Gigantamax Lapras is also quick, so I go for Nuzzle to set, followed by a Thunder Fang before finally going down to a G-Max Resonance. Steve is out next and Brick Break destroys the Veil. She resets so another Brick Break takes it down. She can't move to Paralysis and one more secures the badge. Our future self rewards us with Cory after recognising the 5th Tapestry. And after one last easy rival fight with Hop, we head south towards Spike Meth. Come on, you're giving me a headache now. Marnie helps her sister into the hidden passageway, but obviously not without another battle. She sends out her cat and I send my frog into battle. Two sea bombs taking it out. She did put torment on us before going down however, so we go for synthesis while she gives us a swagger. We do decent damage with sea bomb but the confusion and torment is wasting time. So we switch to Steve, a poison jab not affecting us. However she hits hard with sucker punch but a sidekick from Steve knocks it cold. For Scrafty I switch to Peachy. Oh it's been a while. A couple of drop kicks to lower the attack stat, however it sets with scary face so one more seals its fate. Her more Peko gets a bite of our fruit juice 
but two more drop kicks wins us the match. My team was as follows, Steve, Cookie, Peachy and Sprout. What a weird lunch. Piers brings Scravdy out and Steve tanks a sucker punch, retaliating with Brick Break. I swap to Peachy to avoid the knockout and Dazzling Gleam gets it to the red. One more Dazzling Gleam after Sand Attack takes it down. Malamar is out and I continue with Dazzling Gleam. However, it's not enough. A foul play takes our Peach out. I turn to Cookie, who without a decent moveset manages to take it down with an icy wind and quick attack. Obstagoon comes out to play and finishes it off with Throat Chop after Icy Wind. However, three C bombs are enough to bring it down. His last Pokemon, Scum Tank, tries to use Sucker Punch, but as I predicted it, I go for Synthesis, restoring our HP. I then decide to reduce its PP of Sucker Punch as that's its only known hard hitting damaging move. We're immune to Toxic, so Screech and Snarl remains. We tank onwards, chipping away with Tackle. Eventually, the skunk falls and leaves the smelling aftermath. With that said, we're only one badge away from finishing the gym challenge. Loads of wild Pokemon and Dynamaxing out of nowhere, and I feel I need to do my part to assist Leon and my future self. But they tell me to keep my eyes on Raihan, and after farming for new moves and Steve evolving to Metagross, we were on our way to take on the final gym challenge. Cookie will be a huge help here. Harry Potter and Ron. My name's not Ron. They were easy to finish off with Ice Beam from Cookie, Zen Headbutt from Metagross, and Acrobatics from Peachy. We were ready to take on Raihan. Peachy goes above the level cap, unfortunately, so we have to swap to Buffy, being immune to ground typing. She and Cookie are up first against Flygon and Gigalith, and one Ice Beam takes out the dragon, whereas a bite from Buffy flinches the rock. Sandaconda comes out next, which goes down to another Ice Beam. The office blocks Gigantamaxes, and I decide to waste a turn of Dynamax with Fly. This should help me stall. I would also be able to use Bulldoze safely, so I switch Cookie to Steve. Sadly, it targets my bat, and down she falls. I go for the Gigantamax and Max Guard for the final turn in case it takes target on my Sprout. Once the Dynamax is over and the Sandstorm subsides, one low health Vine Lash at the rock pins it down, and a Bulldoze from Steve secures our final badge. This is where things become problematic. Remember the EXP charm? Yeah, it really messed me up here, bringing my Pokemon over the semi-final level cap so I can't even use my competitive team. So to tackle Marnie, I have to put away Steve and Kaket and bring out Luna, who will be good for this fight. Besides, she still needs to evolve. I start with Luna against Lipard and a calm mind to set up later. Two Dazzling Gleams take it out, but not without barely hanging on after a snarl. Sprout comes out after Luna's beat him. There was no way she would have survived that. I go straight for the Gigantamax and Vine Lash and Max Ooze finish Scrafty. I go for Max Strike for the speed reduction and the Vines do their work while I attempt to heal, but a Swagger got the best of me and Sprout commits suicide. I sent Peachy to perform gymnastics aggressively and get the knockout on Toxie Croak. Morpeko is out by Dazzling Gleam, one more defeats the mouse. Her ace Grimmsnarl comes out and I wasn't sure if I was going to defeat it, but a drop kick takes a chunk out and reduces the attack stat. Torment is still up, so a super effective Dazzling Gleam bruises. However, we couldn't withstand another Max Darkness and we went down. I send out our dog and bite him good with a Thunder Fang. However, it yeets our doggy with a Darkest Lariant. It's all up to Glaceon and Ice Beam. Marnie hits us with Torment, but another Ice Beam was enough to finish the battle. At least Luna evolved to Hatterini. Well, almost all my team were above the level cap. If I didn't have spare Pokemon, the run would have been over with. Luckily, I grind Sobs, Luna and PewDiePie to the level cap before taking on Hulk. Bolt and Steve were still on 49, so we're still good there. In order for me to win, I had to be really lucky. First, I need to set up Quiver Dance while he sets up Cotton Guard. If not, the battle's lost. I need an Air Slash Flinch, otherwise we'll lose PewDiePie and then I'll be able to knock out with Bug Buzz. But this took many attempts, until suddenly, after nearly calling it a night, he sets up Cotton Guard. 
That means we had a free turn to bulk up. Here's an air slash, which unfortunately did not flinch, and one bug buzz finishes Dobwell off. His pinch urchin got hit hard with bug buzz, but we do fall to Thunderbolt. However, our Foxhound finishes up the urchin, and one strong jaw crunch takes it out. His Snorlax comes out to play, and a critical hit high horsepower nearly takes us out, but we barely hold on, and it gives us a chance to swap to Steve. I needed him specifically for Hammer Arm on Snorlax. His Corvid Knight is next, so I hit with Hammer Arm, being my only good mood against the Steel Bird. Although I do hit a Metal Claw to try to get it low enough to kill, but not enough to heal. What? Can you still heal? Right, finally, it's down. Cinderace was all that was in my way, but it grows big and knocks us out with Max Flare, bringing out the sun. This would be a problem for Sobs, so I stall with Bolt and paralyze with Nuzzle. We even managed to get two Thunder Fangs because of paralysis. He scored the free kick, taking out our dog. Finally, it's one simple snipe shot to win the semi-finals. At least dinner's on Leon tonight. Six and a half hours later. Okay, where on earth is this skeezer? Chairman Rose is in a very, very important meeting with the champion. Peekaboo. Tickle tickle. I have the key. After dealing with the imposter, we break into Rose's tower with the help of Marnie, Piers, and Hop. I took the Pokemon that I will probably not use after this one, just so we don't have another issue with this piece of garbage. At least I can swap at the top of the tower. Oleana wants us out, so we say no. Oleana starts with Frostlass and hits us with a Willow Wisp, something I wasn't wanting, but two crunches takes down the ghost, and fuss sends out her fish. <laughs> my team were mainly physical and slower, so we nuzzle on Milotic, followed by Thunder Fangs until one of us gives in. After getting it down to half health, it hits us with Surf and our dog goes down. I go for Peachy and the Trop Kick was just enough to take it out. I then switch when Salazzle comes out. It's Evil Lizard against Agent Sobs. We're barely standing after two Venom shocks, but a critical hit snipe shot brings it to justice. She sends out her Serena, and just to set, I go down with a growl to make it easier to withstand. It's time to Gigantamax my frog, and our Max Ooze gets it down to the red. We also have Double Edge, which I replace with Tackle, as we need a stronger Max Strike. When Garbodor Dynamaxes, I initiate the strike to activate weak armor, but it isn't as quick as it can be without the strike. Our Dynamax ends, making me go for Synthesis to now stall the turns. We live on 2 HP after one last Max Quake, before being able to try for them Double Edge, but it outspeeds, taking us out. I send out Steve to finish with a Bulldoze, and that's Oleana taken care of. You'd think if those two were right there, you'd have us stop the battle? The finals night has come at last, and I'm ready to squash my rival. Wait, why are you here? I have a score to settle with her. <laughs> sure, I'll scrap you. Smacked to the moon. Now get lost. I have a man I want. The finals finally start, and up first is our friend Nessa. My team being Bolt, Steve, Cookie, Peachy, and Sprout. To deal with Golisopod, I hit the nuzzle before a Thunder Fang. It activates Emergency Exit, but with Strong Jaw and our fast pace, we're able to sweep Barascuda and get Sea King in the red. But its waterfall is just too much for our dog, and it goes down under the sea. Peachy finishes off Sea King after a full restore, and Golisopod comes back out. I was hoping Paralysis kicks in, but it doesn't, hitting us with first impression. We take the hit, and Acrobatics finishes its suffering. Fatbird comes out, so we hit hard with a drop kick before falling to an air slash. It's Cookie's turn to hit it with an ice beam, and it was too much for the fat seagull. Her Gigantanax Dregnor comes out and instantly kicks us with Max Rockfall. It's time for my ace, Sprout, to whip it back into the sea. Our next fight with Alistair was a lot more challenging than anticipated, but I swapped Sprout for Kaket and sent out Glaceon first. A Shadow Ball takes it to half, but it gets disabled, so an Ice Beam finishes it off. Chandelier is out and I have to switch to keep Cookie alive, but instantly falls after a Shadow Ball. 
I retaliate with a bulldoze from Steve, hoping to slow it down. A second bulldoze gets it to half health and we unfortunately fall to Willow with damage. I send out Bolt to outspeed and hit with crunch taking down Chandelier, Cursler and Poltergeist. Gengar Gigantamaxes and I hit the nozzle to slow it down and I hit it hard with crunch. After the cursed body takes place, it takes us out. I finish off with Cookie now being quicker and one more Shadow Ball finishes off the match. The final round is with Raihan and I quickly switch Peachy for Luna for stronger type advantage. He starts with Torkoal and I bring out Coquette doing decent damage with Earthquake. It hits hard with a Solar Beam but we press on and another Earthquake deals with the Tortoise. Gudra comes out next. I should have expected the Rain Dance but I didn't and I instead went for Payback where Gudra has the chance to take me out with Muddy Water. But I bring out Bolt and I go for the Crunch. It hits hard but we get another Crunch into the red. But it wasn't enough and another Muddy Water takes my dog for a swim. I bring out Luna and set up a Calm Mind while he heals. As the rain stops and another Rain Dance plays, I go for another Calm Mind boost before starting to hit with Dazzling Gleam. We tank two Muddy Waters before finally finishing it off with another Dazzling Gleam. Turtonator comes out and I go for another Calm Mind expecting Shell Trap, though this wasn't the case and goes for Sunny Day. Still, a Psychic takes it out. Flygon comes out and sets up the Sandstorm, but again falls to Dazzling Gleam. However, the Office Block returns and a Max Steel Spike finally puts Luna to rest. I bring out Steve, who can tank most attacks. He sets up with Max Knuckle, whereas I go for Bulldoze. I want it slow enough so Cookie can finish it off. One more Hammer Arm gets it past halfway, a Body Press finally bringing down our Steve. With this, Cookie comes out and finishes with an Ice Beam and it finally falls, winning the finals of the League Cup. However, all turns to shambles when Mr. Rose sends out the Darkest Day, forcing the region into havoc. Hob and I quickly rush into the slumbering world to hunt for the Ancient Sword and Shield, to take on Marco Cosmos boss, head on. We send out our loyal friend Bolt to deal with Escavalia. It misses a Mega Horn, so two Firefangs deal with it easily. Next up is Ferrothorn, who goes for the setup, but a second Firefang was too much. Perserker also gets the same treatment with Firefang and eventually falls. You too, Klingkang. It does hit us with assurance, but thankfully the burn stat helps us push through it. However, his ace, Copperager, Gigantamaxes and puts our dog six feet under with a Max Quake. Although two Earthquakes from Kaket and it's all over. Finally, our Ruins Ghost killed something. Eternatus ruled the castle until Cookie gets involved and knocks it out with a nice beam. I mean, that was easy. Or was it? Have we just ruined the Galar region? While Eternatus changes form, we were joined by Zacian and Zamazenta to save the world. It takes down my Cookie with a Max Flare, but my loyal dog Bolt is here to join the gang. Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, we'll be there on the double. A couple of days later with the catastrophe over and a whopping four hours of farming, we now had a choice. Out of all the Pokemon Sonya caught, what would be the six that would be her team? Her main three are Boltound, Shiny Serena and Gigantamax Venusaur, so that leaves three more slots. I chose Runirigus or Stonejourner. Either one works. Metagross as her pseudo legendary, like Leon's Dragapult, and Glaceon as her counter. Though any of these three work. Leon sends out Asia Slash, whereas I send out Rhaenyragus. He activates King Shield, however, and we take the lower stat. A payback won't evoke code anyway, and we fall to a second Shadow Ball. I retaliate with an Earthquake from Steve, bringing the Sword and Shield to rest. He sends out Haxorus and an Earthquake hits hard. But we hit a Bulldoze to lower the speed and that should help Cookie. Another Bulldoze gets it down to half but we go down with another Earthquake. I now send out Cookie to hit hard with Ice Beam and guarantee the knockout. Leon goes for Rhyperia next so a quick switch to Peachy and we tank the Stone Edge. We go for a Trop Kick to lower the attack stat but we fall to Heat Crash. Cookie is back out to take it down with another Ice Beam. His pseudo Dragapult is next and outspeeds, but we tank the Flamethrower and down goes the Dragon Ghost. We also tank a high horsepower from Rillaboom 
and it's the same fate like the others. Ice Beam. Leon's Charizard is out and Max Rockfall knocks us out. I then send out Sprout and Gigantamax and hit the Max Guard to stall. Our Pokemon are surrounded by fire, but we set the vines as well and lower his speed with a 140 max strike. This really dense Charizard, but the Sandstorm and Vines get him in the red, so I take the risk and go for a critical double edge. Sprout has done its job. Bolt is last to come out, and one Thunder Fang wins us the championship. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is in fact possible for Sonya to defeat Leon and become champion of Galar and its professor. This was a really fun and different approach, so I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe down below, and ding on the notification bell. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.